All right, my beautiful people, man. Good evening. Good evening to you, man. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, if you could uh, give us just a second here, guys. I'm just uh, doing a little sharing, and hopefully you'll do the same. Uh, I got to go to a couple places here, man. The Black Virtual Marketplace, where uh, we help Black-owned businesses get more exposure and let people know that they exist. And we helped, uh, we're going to look do our best tonight to help this uh, Black woman-owned business go viral here tonight with your help. Uh, so we know that uh, you got to give Facebook a little time to let people know that we're here, Facebook and YouTube as well. And so while we're doing that, uh, I'm just, uh, hopefully, I'm doing what I'm going to ask you to do, which is hit that share button and all that good stuff as well. Good evening to you guys, man. While you guys are connecting, uh, let us know uh, where you're connecting from, what city, what state, what, what country, quite possibly, what city, what state, what country. We're going to have us a good old time tonight. Talk about food. That's right. We're going to talk about food here tonight. And hopefully uh, you guys will uh, do your do your due diligence as well, man. I got one other place to go here. Then we'll get this show going. i uh, give it about two minutes. Just want to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Facebook and, and, and all the algorithms, all that stuff does a good job of letting you know that we are here. So got one other place to share. And I ask that you guys are connecting as well. You share as well. Want to help a black owned business go viral tonight. That's right. Help a black owned business go viral tonight. It's just something as simple as hitting the share button, guys. Something as simple. And I, I keep telling people, we, if we won't do that, I mean, I don't know what else we're going to do. We won't do what's free. I mean, you know, we got we must got a long way to go. You know, we got a long way to go. Man, who's joining us here tonight, man? Go ahead and let us know who you are. Uh, hello to you. Good evening to you, by the way. Thanks so much for joining us. Good. What's going on, man? Jennifer Almond is in the house from Douglasville, Georgia. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, thanks so much for being here tonight. Oh, uh, man, it's it's getting a little chilly. That's the, 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 the temperature is starting to turn, guys. So I don't think we're going to have much of a fall, but maybe winter will be here. But nonetheless, man, we got to keep on going, man, using this thing called the Internet to reach people all over the globe. And we're going to ask that you would just uh, help us out a little bit tonight by hitting the share button if you could uh, so we can uh, we can do our due diligence by, by helping a black woman on business go, go viral here tonight. Uh, so the black business that we're going to be featuring tonight is uh, out of New York City, uh, a, a caterer, uh, a BBC member, uh, and uh, and you know, and let's just show our support, man. Because here's the deal: uh, if you got something going on, you're gonna want to support as well. Well, here's what I, I I try to make sure that people understand that the things that you want done for you, you should do for other people. And it's pretty. It's really just that simple. Like uh, like once you start getting in that space where you know what I just do for other people, what I want other people to do to me, and guess what? Other people start doing for you what you do for other people. And that's really actually true because how you treat other people is how people treat you. But a lot of times we can't take what we dish out. That's the problem. <laughs> can't take. Can't take what we dish out, man. Hey, thanks so much for joining again here tonight on the Black Virtual Marketplace, guys. Uh, what we do here, this show is all about bringing exposure to our Black-owned businesses, right? And so what I've done is I've just had an idea. I had a wild idea that I worked on, and I started to put the guy, I said, man, why don't we take some of the stuff that we're doing in these uh, physical locations, these local locations, and why don't we do it virtual? I mean, this way there'd be no real uh, barrier, right? Uh, you could be where you at, I'm where I'm at, and then we can share this thing all over the space using this thing called the World Wide Web, and you just never know who it'll be in front of. You never know who might be watching. You never know where that next contract might come from, that next opportunity, that next uh, client. You just never know. And so, hey, because we don't never know, we make sure we make this thing public and we let this thing go viral. Hey. It's time to get the show on the road. Good evening to you, Ms. Vivian. Thanks so much for joining here tonight. Y'all know what time it is. Mr. DJ, hit the music. The Black Business Home Shopping Network presents the Black Virtual Marketplace. This is the dedication, a lyrical ovation for the Black Virtual Marketplace, Black Business Innovation. That's right, Black on Black Fire, put in the work for our own empire. Take it to the world, every product you see, we take a global Black Business Believe. We take your local business global like a boss at the Black Virtual Marketplace, Black Business got the sauce, yo. All 
right, my beautiful people, man. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight. The Black Business Home Shopping Network is featuring the Black Virtual Marketplace, where we help businesses go from local to global. That's right, bringing global exposure to our Black-owned businesses, just doing what we should do, man, practicing group economics, which happens in so many different ways. Uh, one, of the, one of the ways we know is to actually patronize with our Black businesses, but another way is actually just to advertise. See, word of mouth is still the most powerful form of advertising, and we can do word of web. How about that? We can do word of web tonight by hitting that like button, that share button. And here's the deal, guys. Just hit the like button, share button if you care. If you care about black business, you care about black women in business, hey, man, hit the like button and the share button if you care. It, all of us working together can help this business go from local to global. That's right. All of us working together can help this business go from local to global. Well, tonight's episode is being sponsored by ERGJ Black Bazaar. That is the Afrocentric marketplace where you can find Afrocentric home decor, personal care products, and also uh, black art inspired gifts. And so you want to check out e www.ergjblackbazaar.com, www.ergjblackbazaar.com. Okay. Now, here's the deal, guys. I, I don't like to waste a whole bunch of time talking about me and the things that we got going on. This is all about the black business that we're going to be featuring here tonight. So, what I want to do without further ado, uh, let me introduce you to a BBC member. Matter of fact, you're joining right now. You're from the BBC. You come to show your support. Man, make sure you go put in the comments below hashtag BBC. I want to introduce to you guys uh, a chef and a woman of many other things. Too, we're going to find out all about what this uh, phenomenal, this black girl magic got going on up in New York City. Let me introduce you guys to Miss Gladys Ch Chateau. I believe that's the best way to say her name because he, I be saying a whole bunch of spellings for a word. I'm like, which one is, he got so many different spellings. Which one is I'm supposed to spell? I ain't know how to spell it right. But anyway, let's bring our money to the show, man. Miss Gladys is up in the house, man. Good evening to you, Queen. How are you? Hi, guys. Hi, Even. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure, man. Thanks so much for being here, Miss Gladys. And it's Ch Chateau, right? Is that said right? That's just the Facebook. It's it's Shatu. Shatu. Okay. See, I knew it. I knew it. I saw something that said S H something something. I was like, what? what, what, what That's what? the right one. Okay. That's the right one. All right. So, <laughs> that is Shatu, right? Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Man. I, I absolutely, man. Well, Miss Glass, I know we've been uh, kind of rocking for a little bit, and I've been following. I can't wait to taste some of that, some of the samosas and stuff you got going on. But there's some people who are joining here tonight, never seen you, never heard you. You know, we all stay busy. So if you could just take a moment um, to uh, let the people know who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Gladys Shahtu. I'm the chef and owner of Sambuksa NYC. It's the only Sudanese caterer, so food from Sudan. We serve Sudanese cuisine. Um, our speciality are samosas. They're like little patties or empanadas, but they're super tiny, like a stuffed nachos. They're like a triangle, and they're filled with beef or vegetables. And we we're at outdoor markets. We do we cater events. We do you know uh, office catering lunches, and we've gotten to cook at the James Beard uh, Foundation. And yeah, it's just growing so fast. I'm so excited. <laughs> Absolutely. So he says it's growing so fast. He says so the only uh, Sudanese cuisine now now what uh first i guess tell us where is Su sudan okay <laughs> where is sudan in relative to some other uh, you know well-known countries i guess and then uh second what makes it what makes uh what makes the cuisine in sudan different special uh, uh you know in its own unique way yeah so um sudan i consider you know, Sudan split in two now. There's North and South, but I I consider it one country because it's my country, you know. Um, it's right uh, below Egypt, um, next to Kenya, next to Ethiopia, next to Chad, Libya. Um, what's special about our cuisine is that it's like a mix of all of Africa, East, West, North, South, whatever you want to, you know, mix in there. And also the me Mediterranean and the Middle East because we had, you know, lots of influence from you know saudi arabia or you know greece and so on and so forth so it's a very unique cuisine nobody knows about it and it's delicious okay Absolutely. <laughs> anytime you have all of africa together it's like so delicious <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, and i keep seeing you know doing the events and i, I see the the food we'll take a look at your website in just a little bit if you could tell us a little bit about 
Uh, I, I mean, I'm really interested. First, I want to know, uh, were you born in Sudan yourself and came yeah. to America? Yeah. Um, and, 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 and with the real African, you know, uh, uh, being raised coming from, from, from Africa, is, is there, what is the difference? Like, is there, some, is there something that's been instilled in you from a young age as far as doing for self, entrepreneurship, starting your own thing? Or is that just something you just kind of kind of got on your own? Like, is there really some big difference between how you've no, noticing us in America, how we're raised versus maybe how you were raised until you came to America? Yeah, so I, I was born in Sudan and then I actually moved from Sudan to Queens, you know, and I spent like three years in Queens. And after like three years, we went over to Europe. I grew up in Europe and Switzerland. And yeah, I spent all my life there. But I always used to come to, you know, New York for summer and for Christmas. So I always had a very strong connection to America. Like, uh, yeah, Chris, all my summer camps were here, you know, in Queens and in Manhattan. And I thought I was African-American, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when I was over in Europe, I was like, I'm African American. I didn't even know like I, uh, Af the difference African African American. Like I thought I was until I moved here, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm not that. And you know, when you go back home to Africa, it's like, oh, you're not that either. You know, you're not African. Get out of here. So it's like, God damn, can I be somebody? You know. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's a difference, not necessarily because you know like a, you know they make a big thing out of it like immigrants you work so hard whatever but i think it's just my family specifically my mom used to work really hard my dad too my grandpa like everybody used to work really hard so i think it depends on your family and it also depends on the education you get like here in america they don't they probably don't teach you in school you know to build your own business or start a business it's just like go to college get debt you know and that's it and work for somebody your whole life and retire um in europe you 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 learn skills you know you do an apprenticeship um you can work for a business and you're still well off you don't have all this college debt and you don't have to go to college to survive you know and i think that's the difference yeah <laughs> absolutely now tell us a little bit about your your journey into entrepreneurship uh i i, I know you as a woman of many uh talents businesses uh, but again, there's some people who just meeting you and hearing from you for the first time, although they know you're a member, it's the first time to actually see you uh, live and hear from you. So um, yeah, tell us a little bit about your journey into entrepreneurship. How long has um, Sambuksa, uh, you know, been in existence? And, uh, you know, were there some things you did entrepreneurial wise before? Or did you, you know, kind of tell us about a little bit about your journey? Yeah, so um I, you know, I did the classic route, go to school. I, I did my college degrees. I did um, international relations for my undergrad. And then I did international management for my master's degree. Um, I worked like at all these, you know, high profile places like the UN, the World Economic Forum. I even worked at the DNC in DC. You know, I, I thought I would go straight into politics, but, um, you know, the election happened and they weren't hiring people. And anyway, I thought the whole thing was fishy. You know, the UN was kind of fishy to me. <laughs> Everything was like, they're not really doing what they say they, they're doing. And, you know, politics is fishy anyways. You know, they're not really, you know, empowering people or helping, you know. So, yeah. And it was, I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me that I didn't get hired, you know. Um, and I always, when I was in college, actually, I used to sell the little patties, the samosas to finance my, uh, you know, to pay my rent. Oh. So, yeah. So when I didn't get hired but after coming back to the state, um, I was like, okay, you know, this is the best time to start, you know, my dream. I always wanted a restaurant. I always wanted our food. And I started doing my research. And I was like, man, there's no Sudanese place anywhere, even in the East Coast, period, you know. So I was like, okay, then I got to be the one to do it. I could cook really well. Um, yeah, so I launched like, uh, in 2018, so 2017, you know, New York has a lot of like free business classes. There's a small business center. I'm sure every state has that. And they have all these resources where you take free business classes. They show you how to register your business. So I wasn't doing anything. I was just babysitting, you know, to get by in New York. And that's another 
I uh, think I'm still, you know, I'm still doing it now on the side to finance the business, but you know, it paid off. It's it's like a safety net. And yeah, I launched in 2018 and I did all the outdoor markets and that's how I grew. And this year has been amazing. You know, I, I, yeah, like I said, I got to cook at the James Beard. I got to cook for the mayor of New York and just all these big events. I'm standing side by side with big restaurants that have like 900 people, um, staff members and stuff like that. It's just me alone without no team standing right next to them and doing just as well, you know, so. It's just amazing, that. man. Everybody putting council amazing. Now, now, I'm, I'm, so you went to college, po political stuff. You got the, that, that part. You're a chef. You just know how to cook. So did you have to go to chef school or anything like that? Is that something that you did or you just, I mean, you just using what you know? Yeah. So yeah, like my mom used to give cooking classes and I just learned from her and my dad cooks too. So we cook every evening. When I was eight, I used to, or even younger than eight, I used to prep salads at home, you know, chop the onions, chop the garlic. Like that's what every Sudanese kid has to do. <laughs> and as a girl, you bring tea or whatever every day to your dad. And yeah, I think that's the difference. You know, African kids, we have to like help out in the kitchen right away, you know, or Caribbean kids. I'm Caribbean too. I'm Haitian too. So you just got to help out, you know, and that's how I learned how to cook from an early age, like you got it, you got to know how to cook, period, you know? So I'm very, you know, Glass, this is, I, we, we're like internet friends or something like that. I've never really, you know, uh, talked to you. And I'm I'm just no, amazed. I'm I learned from you. <laughs> you know, okay. Well, I'm amazed by your, 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 it seems like you have such a carefree attitude. It's like, oh, it's just, uh, you know, just, just, this is just what we do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it? This seems to be like a strength of yours, though. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, I, I'm, I, I'm yeah. imagining that there. Th obviously, the things that come up in business, things that come up in life, and you just, ah, you know, let's just keep going. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I've always been like that. Like, you know, if something didn't work out, you know, you just move on to the next thing. There's always something to do. You know, I think everybody has a talent. Everybody can do something everybody loves to do something so you just got to focus on that you know yeah you know? And, and never be too you know never be too proud to do something like i i i even you know when i had to raise extra money i went on task rabbit and like cleaned houses like whatever you know i mean my dad was not happy at all when i went into the food but now he's like really proud because i'm the only one doing it and i see myself like as a sudanese food ambassador you know, and I just like to encourage everybody to just do what you love, you know, and make it a make a business out of it. Man, absolutely. So, you, hey, you, yeah, hey, everybody, put out, so don't be too proud. <laughs> don't be too proud, man. So, uh, so, so glad. So, you said you learned from me. What? How? How? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't know the story. So, how long have you? How have we been? So, I didn't even have a business then, and I just came across your videos, you know. Um, I try to, you know, there's a big movement going on in black businesses and supporting each other. And when I moved to the U.S. or like moved to New York, actually, it, I saw like how New York was getting gentrified. You know, I didn't get it at the time. I was like, you know, when I used to come to the States, I was like a tourist. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But when I saw like what really was going on, I was like, damn, this is like serious. Like we do really need to support each other. So I make it a point like not to go to, you know, the beauty supply stores, not to go to nail salons. You know, in Brooklyn, like they had that big blowout a year ago. And I even made it a point before the blowout not to go because I went into some stores and they would talk to, you know, the older uh, Caribbean aunties any type of way, you know, and I had to like fight people and be like, why, why are you talking to them like that? Like they're paying you, you, you know, in Europe or whatever, like customer service, if, like if you're paying somebody, they can't talk to you no way. You know, so for me, that was weird. I was like, this is a very strange environment. And it's because that's why I actually left Europe, because, you know, there's racism there, too. And I just didn't feel like, you know, I can't hide it. You know, I can't blend in over there. You know, I speak like the language perfectly. You know, I, I, I tried the whole thing, you know, to assimilate, to act like them. It's not going to work for us. You know, just my dad used to tell me all these things, but. I never understood it. And, you know, you got to grow and learn on your own. So, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, where were what were we saying? What were we talking about? Oh yeah, how I learned from you. Yeah, so I came. So through all of that, I came through your uh, across your videos and your pages, and you were like, you know, you can drop ship, you can do this, you can make a market, you can get a store, uh, get get yourself some storage space, and like start selling stuff online. And I was like, oh my god, yeah, I could totally do that, and. I just did it in my my way. I actually wanted to freeze my products and get them into stores. I'm still working on that, you know. Yeah. And I used to tune in all the time. And <laughs> I was like, damn, I don't have no membership fee. I can't pay right now. You know, <laughs> you always see the PayPal, like, ding, ding. <laughs> I feel so, like I got next week, you know. <laughs> just trying to <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Uh, you just mentioned freeze your product. I'm trying to figure out what I, what I got to do to get me some of these some mozo. I mean, what's going to need to happen in order to get some down here to Atlanta? I mean, is it, is it, the, the, the shipping just ain't going to work? Can you, can you put it into a plastic bag? I mean, is that not going to, how are we going to get this thing down here? A box or something? I mean, what are we going to do? Yeah, I could try. I could actually, that would be a good uh, trial for me, you know, to ship it you know, across states. Um, you know, I don't I don't work with the dry eyes. It's dangerous and stuff. I still need to do research and probably take a class for that. But I guess I could do like the ice packs, but it won't be frozen, frozen. But you would like, once you receive it, you would have to put it in the freezer right away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I would have to ship express, you know. It was possible. It was very possible. I mean, I don't need a whole bunch. I mean, once I receive them, they only go in one place. They go to my stomach. I just saying, they, 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 now they ain't nothing. I mean, they ain't gonna be frozen. You gotta, them for you, you gotta cook them. Oh, it's supposed to be, okay. You gotta tell me how this thing go. I thought they would. Just, I'm gonna put them in the microwave. I'm gonna go eat. Go to town. That ain't how it works. No, not microwave. You, if you have like an oven, you know, like a um, let's call that pot oven. Oh, okay. All right. You gonna have to, you gonna have to, you gonna have to, you know, your, your educator brother now, because I, 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 I gotta send you the instructions. Yeah, how to cook. <laughs> okay, fantastic, man. So that's your specialty, right? So, but I saw some other yeah. stuff. I guess when you went to some uh, catering space as well. So talk to us a little bit about some of the food that you that you do that you do, sir. Oh, is this on the website? Do I need to pull the website up now? No, no. I mean, you could you could pull it on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you could put the menu up, the menu page of the website. It kind of shows what kind of food we got. All so, right, yeah. Right now, guys, we're going again, guys. We're on a Black Virtual Marketplace. This is what we do, guys. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button, the share button. Uh, we got a, a you know helping a black woman go viral tonight. You're on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, the follow button, hearts or whatever it is. whatever button you can hit, just hit. Okay, I don't even know what all of them do. Y'all know what they do, so do that. And this is uh, at uh, sambuksa.com, uh, and you can follow her. Uh, you can follow her, her business page on Facebook, Samosa NYC, and on Instagram, Sambuksa NYC. Now, what does that stand for, by the way? The word itself, Sambuksa or Samosa? Yeah, so Sambuksa, you see those triangles on the screen? Yeah. Those are the Sambuksas. They're like little patties, or you could call it a stuffed nacho with, you know, beef. Those are the sandboxes. And then what is uh and so you have some sauces there too. So we eat them with sauce. Yeah, so um I got a yogurt sauce with dill and garlic and then a hot sauce. That one I used to do, it was um it was uh what was it? Havanera chili, you know, hot sauce. But now I have a different one, a green one, which is like a um green chili peanut butter hot sauce. That that's like a hit. Wait a second. I'm, I'm, Hold on a second. Let me go back here. Let me hit a saw because it's the secret being a saw. Let me. Hit, you have a yogurt that has what in it? Garlic and dill. Dill. Okay. And then you say you had a hot sauce that had habanero chili or something. And then now you say you got a new one that's green and it's got what in it? Peanut butter. But don't tell nobody. We about to package that. <laughs> I know. I know. No. 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 You said peanut butter and something else though. Yeah. Just green chilies, peanut butter. Yeah. And you say it's a hit, huh? It's a hit, yo. So you're gonna so you're gonna turn this sauce into a sauce, and then we're gonna be able to buy the sauce out of the uh, buy the sauce. Yes, yes I'm getting uh, it's in the lab right now. Um, I got a oh, you can get the, get the you, you can get it mass produced. Yes, yeah. So how long before I can give me a bottle of the new sauce? I'll send you a sample. I, I gotta send you a sample of the samosas and the sauce together. Yes, of course. Okay. All right. All right. Now, now, walk us, say you want 
<laughs> okay. Now hold on, say toaster oven or air fryer is what they said. Freeze them. Toaster. Yes, air fryer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Air fryer. Y'all know. You see, y'all know. Justin said, "Are there any similarities in Ethiopian food and Sudanese cuisine?" Yes. So the thing about Sudan is we got everybody's food. Sudan is like very, you know, it's it has so many different cuisines in one together. So. We got Ethiop something like a injera, the Ethiopian food, but much thinner. We got Somali food. We got Egyptian food. We got like West African food, like the fufu and all of that. We South Sudan has like the rest of Africa, you know, like Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, everything, Congo. We have everybody because, you know, what they won't tell you is so-called Egypt. Sudan is Egypt, you know, we're the Kush, the kingdom of Kush, Meroe, and the Nubians, like, they still exist, the Nubians, they're alive, like, there's a whole tribe that speaks Nuba, you know, like, they're the Nuba, they're still there, but, you know, they're, the media is not going to tell you that, um, so, yeah, it was like a crossroad to go, you know, to the Mediterranean, or to go to Europe, when, you know, we had all of Africa, when we had our kingdoms, and so on, so, um, so all of the food went through Sudan to get to the, you know, either to the Middle East or to Europe. So Gladys, I want to tell you, like, you are so, you know, again, like, you don't talk enough. Like, we, I don't ever see. I know you're busy or whatever, right? I know we all <laughs> busy, but but you're you are very important. First, you're an impressive woman. Let me tell you that you're impressive, but you're important. Thank you. you're, you're giving us, you're giving us some. Some you're giving us some context and history um, that we some may know or some may have. Uh, you know, for example, we have another sister in the BBC that's from Germany, so she's able to give us some context about what's going cool. on, what's going on in Brussels and all yeah. that stuff and, and, and the diaspora. And you're able to give us yeah. some context that straight from Africa. You know, being that you, uh, you yeah. know, from there, have family there, come from there. So it's it's kind of a, it's very important to me. Um, that we really bring context to not only just our group, but, you know, uh, at large so that people can really understand what they're, because we're letting TV shape and mold our mindset about ourselves. And yeah. until you really come across people say, no, it's not like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they can really say it's not like that because they are from there. Like, you can't argue with somebody that's from there and say, no, nah, that's not what it's like. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I'm just saying it's, it's important that we hear more from you um, when you get time or when you get a chance to, to plug in. And, and oh, I definitely, yeah, we should plan another another talk maybe, you know, about, I don't know, growing up in Europe or the similarities or, you know, there's this whole, it's reality, you know, like now, you know, you know, the like, um, right now there's the AVOS movement, like it's a real thing and a lot of Africans don't get it or Caribbeans, they're like, why are you leaving us out? And I I fully support it, you know? And I think that's something that we should, you know, discuss at one point. You understand? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of, you know, a lot of people feel some type of way about, you know, reparations. They, they don't understand, like, they got to, you know, go get it from their respective former colonies and whatnot. Like Sudan, we just had a revolution right now and we overthrew the government and, you know, the media didn't show much of it until it was, we, we basically overthrew the government ourselves. Like Sudan is, it's, it's still the same as it was historically, like we overthrew like we conquered Egypt and whatnot, like we kicked out Romans and so on and so forth. And today, like we did it ourselves, like little kids, you know, 12, 10, they put their life on the line and they actually, you know, just to sacrifice for the country. And I think that's something we could really learn from in terms of, you know, from Sudan. Absolutely. I mean, hey, hey, hey you, you just said overthrow the government, like... <laughs> Uh, no, 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 that's not what happened. No, 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 no,
taking their. I was saying no because we on Facebook. Like, <laughs> you know, Facebook. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, so let's take a look here, man. So, walk us through your website here. Uh, but no, what I was saying was we need to see you a little bit more active in the BBC. Oh yes, I know. But you know, I'm a one woman band in my in my business. It's just me. I do the social media. I'm the delivery man. I'm the chef. I'm everything. I get it. <laughs> the, I, the shopping. Yeah. Right now, I don't have that much time. But for sure, I will. I'll try my best to um, be more active and interact. When I had time, I did. You know, now that outdoor market season is done, so it slowed down a little bit. So we'll be good. Okay. All right. So walk us through your website here. People want to see what else you got going on. Okay. So go on a menu. Yeah, right there. And so those are the samosas. Again, you see the, it's the beef. We do beef, chicken, lamb, pork, whatever the per people want, you know. And then we have vegetarian fillings as well. You know, sweet potato for the vegans, carrots, chickpeas, lentils, and so on. And then we have cheese fillings, you know, uh, main dishes. We have, um, you know, the stews. You see, that's like the West African fufu, you know, with the beef stew around it, ground beef stew and okra stew. And then we have like big wraps, you know, for lunches that are very popular, vegan or meat. Um, you see with fava beans, falafel, and so on. And then we have fried meats, yeah, chickens, battered fried meats as well, rice dishes, like, yeah, we have like a big menu. So now I just recently signed up to like uh, different platforms, like, you know, the food business is going online now. This is one of the most popular salads. It's like a Greek salad but it has peanut butter in it. We love peanut butter in Sudan. Uh, the next one is like a baba ganoush. It's an eggplant salad with peanut butter. The, the Wait, lentils. What did you say? It's eggplant salad with peanut butter. That what I'm looking at right now? Yeah. What is, what is, what is aubergine? Aubergine. Egg, eggplants. Eggplants. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord. Who you gonna help, brother? Today, I'm gonna learn today. Oh, I'm gonna learn today. Go ahead. <laughs> this is a lentil dip. <laughs> yeah, with garlic, and those are falafel. You, you know, everybody knows the falafel. And we also have desserts. You know, no, 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 desserts. No, everybody does not know the falafel. What the hell is a falafel? Oh, it's a fried chickpea. Fried chickpea. Yeah, don't assume that people know what this stuff is, honey. I'm trying to tell you, like. <laughs> I, forgot. I, I forgot. People in New York know. I know. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so check out the website, you know. What is this? I mean, we're not in Atlanta yet, but maybe maybe one day we, uh, sorry? What are we looking at here, the sweets? Talk to us about these oh, sweets. Those are, those are cookies with jam, cookies with powdered sugar, butter cookies, you know. We have like semolina cake, which is like a cornbread that's uh, drenched in syrup. Really delicious, you know? Yeah, it's a new cuisine, but it's like, people love it. <laughs> okay. All right, and then you have uh, services, what is this? Yeah, that, I have to update it. We're still updating that part. But I, I had all the photos of the catered events, but since I'm still uploading some, it's like, Okay. Um, under construction. So you got a blog. Then, is this you here? This, the way? this is where I start. I started out. I I, I haven't done it so yeah. regularly. Now, didn't we get a blog? we got a blog from you for one of our first uh, newsletters, right? Yes, I remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let me see if she shouted out to BBC. Let me see if the BBC shout out anywhere. <laughs> no, it's not there yet. Yeah. You have to update it. I gotta update. <laughs> I, still, I have so much to do. Yeah, it's just okay. got no time like that. <laughs> All right, let's catch up on these comments, man. Mark Dan said, uh, "Now you made a statement. I heard it. I'm gonna come back to it in a second. All right, Evan, we have to convince her that she's far too valuable doing delivery on, on and smaller tasks outsource." Yes, I understand. I gotta get a team together. I'm still All like. Right. Now, uh, I will tell you, you know, thanks so much, Mark. Now, uh, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, that we, we're doing now that you may or may not know about, because I know you've been busy, 
is we actually are, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are having the uh, business development portion. We're getting heavy into it. Um, and yeah. so he just, he's making a suggestion. And, and this is what we do inside of the group as well. So we're really starting to get uh, ramp up into it uh, as we get to yeah. the older months. Um, I, I don't really want to start until after the holidays because I know that we'll get interrupted with season with, with people traveling and stuff. Uh, but we are starting to get into that a little bit. Now, you mentioned, now talk to us about, you said that the food industry is now is starting to go online. So talk to us a little bit more about that because it's important, I tell people, to, to be able to recognize the trends that are happening in your industry. And you're you're starting to see this taking place. Yeah. What, are, what are you noticing? So, you know, on Instagram, I saw a lot of like other food vendors, you know, shout out different catering platforms like Platters is a big one, P-L-A-T-T-E-R-Z. And then Easy Cater, you guys must have seen an ad like they do heavy marketing. It's e EZ Cater, Catering. Then there's Cater Cow, there's Cater to Me and Food to Eat. And these are all online platforms that like have a, large um, client base, like corporate offices and so on. And, you know, they have dedicated teams that order lunches or, you know, order for events. So these are usually big gigs. And I just signed up to like five, four or five of them. Most restaurants are going online now because, you know, rent is getting really expensive, especially in New York. New York is a food hub, but like a lot of the rent is just too high for some restaurants. They're closing even high-end restaurants. And, you know, people who can afford it, it's just getting, you know, unpay it's unpayable. And most people are just, you know, like to sit at home and be and if they can get the same quality of food at home and, you know, entertain their guests in their homes or, you know, they have a nice place at their office, why not just order online instead of going out to a restaurant? and all that hassle you know so yeah the trend is going online now lots of big restaurants are going online you know you know the grubhub and the seamless is already a thing Domino's, like they have exponentially grown their profits just by having a whole team dedicated just to the online ordering you know even if you don't like Domino's pizza and how it tastes it's just the ease of how you can order and how fast it comes and everything and how you can put your little pizza together makes a big difference that, for example, I don't know, other pizzas don't have like Pizza Hut. You know, they well, don't have that the big thing, budget. The thing also with um, Domino's is that not only do, does that, but it, 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 it takes you through the process of it's being made to it's in the yeah. oven to it's out for delivery to, you know, it, it, it you can literally get like an app or something. I don't know what to do. It's, it's kind of pretty cool i get you they up on technology it's like, them, it's like you with them in the kitchen you feel you know you feel a part of it right so 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 what are you what are you doing gladys to 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 you know as you notice the trend that's happening in your industry uh what are you doing to make sure that you're not in the back of the bus yeah so yeah i mean i i got on it really early like i said i just signed up you know to all these online platforms. I wanted to open a restaurant by next year, but now, you know, hearing that it's not necessarily, I might not do it next year and just, you know, just go full on catering and get a team together and just, you know, um, specialize in that and then see later down the road, you know, maybe towards the end of next year to get a place. So. This is, this is such a, this is, um, this is a one. This is such a value, Mark. I don't know if you're available, man. If you want to come on, man, I want to. If you have an opportunity, brother, just uh, you know, you can pop in with us. I I want to. I want to. I want to. You know, give you a link, Mark. If you want, if you want to pop on, Mark is in the um. Uh, he's got a cheesecake factory up in Wichita, Kansas, so he can relate to some of the things we're talking about. So if he wants to jump on, ask him a couple of questions, we can have some BBC time tonight. That would be great if he wants to do that, but. This is a great conversation to have because because you're saying, hey, I I I I, I plan to, or I, I intend to, or I looked into getting this, you know, getting a, 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 a retail space, right, or, or some type mm -hmm. of space. But then now you're saying, well, it may mm -hmm. not, it may not be necessary. And yeah, um, I've been in the, I've been. I, you can click on that link, Mark, if you do want to come in. If you got a couple of things to say or wants to ask some questions or whatever, 
uh, right there. Um, and then, uh, and I was doing the same thing. Like I wanted to get a space, right? And and then when I start looking into, it, I say this this doesn't make this doesn't make good financial sense right now. And, and although yeah. my heart was saying get a space, my pockets were saying, what the hell you think you're doing? <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess we ain't getting no space right now. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I lost no. some money, but it was a good decision at the time. And so it, I, I'm just wondering when you know with that same kind of dynamic that that you're going through or that you that you're currently processing and noticing where the, where your where your industry is going with uh with the business that you're in like is that a pull on your like the psychology like get a space like is it because it was hard for me I was like i want to get a space i want to feel like i own something you know what i mean like <laughs> it's a funny kind yes, of i think i think the only way financially that it makes sense in today's restaurant industry or in New York as a whole is if I get like full funding, you know, say the whole Sudanese community pulls together. Like we have a huge community in DC, right? Like all of the Sudanese are over there and nobody opened the restaurant there. You know what I'm saying? Like a large community is there and nobody did it. But in San Francisco, a guy opened the Sudanese spot in Ohio. They opened one. You know, there's another guy in L.A. opening one. So, yeah, I guess the only way it makes sense financially is if I can, like, raise the funds. But, like, me personally to, you know, dish out, I don't know, 50 to 250K, you know, just to, like, fix up a place and or, you know, rent for 7000 a month for a restaurant in New York. It just doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Maybe in another state, but New York is just is, no. <laughs> and, and we just heard a story about the the barber who uh, was in the space, and they rent kept going up, kept up, going up, and he had to get out of the space, and he went went mobile. And uh, I think that I think that's a viable option for a lot of restaurants now, especially if you're catering. Uh, to have yes. uh, we're down here in Atlanta, we got Slutty Vegan that's doing this thing there. Oh, I love mobile. them. She yeah. even did a pop up in New York. Yeah, I showed it. It's, 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 okay, got you, Martin. It's, oh, they drove down to New York with the, with the with the vegan mobile. No, they came. They came to New York. Did a little pop up. It, it, they look sold out. The lines were crazy. Like, yeah, she doing her thing. They doing their thing. That's bloody vegan. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to be when I grow up. But but she's traveling. She's literally traveling. Um, you know, she even came to, and now she came to my hood. I'm like, wait a second, you came to the hood? She came to the hood. They mobile and moving around, going from city to city. They making connections with these uh so these uh these these uh you know uh graveyard malls, and they'll go to the mall, pop up in the park, and next thing you know, they got all these people that stand outside of the mall. It's, it's a wonderful strategy. Uh, but I, I, I'm saying that to be a viable option for places, especially if you're doing catering. Uh, to be able to be, I, I, that's the way I'm looking at my business. I'm like, I, I'm be mobile. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I got to move. By next, by next year, for sure, I'm gonna go all up and down the East Coast. Definitely gonna go to DC and do lots of pop ups over there because you know, the people are there and um, yeah, my I, our food needs to be shared. Like it's so delicious. Like everybody knows Middle Eastern food, but our food is like even better. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, so what? So, let's talk a little bit about where you see five year. You say it two years from now, two to five years from now. What, what do you want this, this, this thing that you create? Where do you want your baby to have grown into? Okay, so my plan is definitely having like a few products in stores. You know, different big grocery stores or grocery chains. Um, what kind of product? Uh, you know, are you I mean, are you meant to the sauce? So like the hot the hot sauce, the samosas as well. You know the little patties that people can pop it in the air fryer in the you know toaster oven and have a little meal. You know if they have friends coming over, they have something oh, in the like, freezer. That's kind of like that's kind of like the Jamaican patty that they have frozen that you can pick up and you, you come in the box and you can boom pop that thing in. You can have your little beef patty. Yeah. They they have they have yeah they have frozen samosas already you know like the Indian ones or but mine are just more delicious you know what I'm saying okay exactly. <laughs> it's different, you know I've 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 I've, ate, I've eaten all of my competition they're good you know some of them are really good some but most of them are not tasty at all and they still sell them they're still there you know after so and so many years 
yeah and then what else um yeah definitely have a restaurant like a physical location it could also be something very small um then um i will also want to get like spice rubs you know sell spice rubs like dry spice rubs um what else our biscuits should be packaged as well and sold everywhere um my bigger goal is actually having a business incubator back home you know to have like young girls and men and young kids just the youth generally you know teach them like what you're doing kind of you know teach them how to open their business show them you know do the videos you know just educate them tell them you know what 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 are you what are you good at you know and get some people who are i'm not so versed you know in finances but maybe get you know as experts to talk and teach the kids and then you know according to whatever they're into they can branch out and start their own businesses and be independent that's what i want to do so you want to do you want to you have an incubator back in sudan yeah yeah, and Haiti. And Haiti. Haiti as well. Now, now I'm about that life. I can tell you that I'm about that life. You, you talking that you talking my language now? Cause I, you know, I, I'm telling you, I'm all, I don't know, I almost gave up on the adults. I'm almost, get, I'm all, I'm all about this. Oh, forget <laughs> them. Forget them. Forget them. Forget us. We old. Leave us alone. <laughs> I'm about this close to giving up on these that damn adults. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you, you know how we are as adults. You know, just. The kids, they have like, they're hungry. They want to learn. They want to do something. And they're not scared. You know, they're not scared. They're like, okay, today is the day. I'm going to do it today. And they'll they'll get to it. And hey, you know what I've learned? Like, I have a lot of younger friends and they just inspire me because of just how passionate they are about things. And that keeps me like, you know, wanting to continue and go hard, you know. Absolutely, man. So, guys, we're talking to Ms. Gladys, man, the uh, black CEO of uh, Sambuxa NYC. Uh, we looked at the website, guys. You can go check them out at www.sambuxa.com. Uh, a chef, uh, a chef by uh, talent, okay? <laughs> she, she, and she, she get the girl know how to cook. That's all you need to know, okay? <laughs> Facebook at Sambuxa uh, NYC and uh, Instagram at Sambuxa NYC. Now, now, Gladys, you, 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 you've already kind of talked about, uh, you know, having I, maybe why I don't know how long you've been watching me. I, I don't know. I just do what I do. Uh, but you also became a member of the BBC, uh, you know. So, 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 why did you join? And and, and, and what do you get now? What what value does the BBC bring to you, your business life, uh, and, and, and what you got going on? You know, um, initially I was really dedicated, and I really wanted to. Um, you know, tune in regularly. And actually, we were doing the, what was it called? Like saving, you know, at the beginning of the year, saving so and so much and like pooling our resources together to like buy stocks and shares and whatnot. Honestly, I'm not so financially versed and I really wanted to learn and I just wanted to do something. But, you know, things got in the way, business got like, you know, up and down and, you know, I wasn't so financially liquid, but um, I do want to get back into it. Probably, you know, you're going to probably start, you said January again, you know, pulling the, re I want to really do it. And I, yeah, I wanted to invest. I wanted to learn about investing. I wanted like your book, you know, you, you always, you always, uh, you have the book club, right? Where you read and we discuss things. Like, I love that. I love that going on Facebook and having something, that actually makes sense, you know, that I'm learning from. That's that's why I started following. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I still will. I will, you know. And, of course, if, if I have more time, I'll do even more. But, um, yeah, I'm only one person. There's only 24 hours in a day. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we don't have to work on this whole team thing. That's what we're going to have to work on. We're, just so you know, man, the book club, we're currently reading Black Fortunes. It's uh, the story of the first six African Americans who escaped slavery and became millionaires. So we Man. are. That's what we're. I miss that. That's what we're currently reading right now, Black Forces. Okay, so just so you know, <laughs> but the cool thing is, I also got a podcast, so you can always catch it on the podcast yeah. as well. Yes, you've been sharing. Thanks so much. I will definitely that I can listen to. You know, on the train. You know, these New York subways. Go down. Yes, I'm gonna <laughs> learn. Listen. 
Absolutely, guys. So uh, for those that are watching, man, again, uh, you know, want to know, want to make sure you guys don't have any questions for uh, for Gladys. Again, there may be some things that came across that you'd like to ask and, you know, know a little bit more about, uh, you know, what she's doing and, 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 and how she's doing it. Maybe some of you guys are interested in the, in the restaurant business. You hopefully got some some tips or some things that she's uh, kind of paying attention to the market, paying attention to her industry. Uh, but Gladys, I definitely want to ask you as you, uh, you know, as you continue on this journey, <laughs> and you uh <laughs> and you uh just a minute I'm, I'm gonna step out for a sec <laughs> okay yeah no i'll go down i'll go put them <laughs> yeah thank you good night you're welcome good night so Mark, I got I got oh the last thing they love it. So <laughs> thank God for technology, man. Phone's still working and everything. Oh, maybe we just got a little freeze. We'll see. So I'll wait on it just a little bit, guys. So how's everything uh, for an audience, man? You know, I, I, man, I'm pretty inspired. I mean, this um this woman here, impressive woman, uh, you know, uh, just going after her dreams, uh, oh. making it happen, um, and uh, putting forth the energy to do it. You, we got a little uh, once. Okay, it looks like it's coming back. Let me know when you get uh when you get settled, Miss Gladys. Uh, Ava, that's it. Just read that there are, there are fourteen. Hey, sorry, the connection went off. No, no problem. Yeah, so that's my other hustle. You see, like I, so I don't have kids, I don't have family, so I just use the extra time to like go ba to babysit. There are apps for that too, you know, to raise some extra cash, you know, on weekends or. Okay, so you uh, so you said there are apps for that, apps to be able to find babysitting jobs or, or extra odd yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah, odd job like Task Rabbit here in New York. It's Hello Sitter for babysitting. Yeah, I mean you got to use your time, you know. You got to use your you got to exchange your you know well use your time wisely, multiply that money but with your time instead of just exchange. I got you though, absolutely. So what I was going to ask you, Miss Gladys, is um you know uh, you know is there something that you would like to share with that uh, you know because we're talking about your uh, uh, incubator, uh, you know teaching the next generation. Uh, there and there could be somebody that's watching tonight that just really is like, okay, I want, I, I'm, she, she got my attention, and for those that got your attention, are there some words of encouragement or some things that you like to say to them as it relates to the journey that they may be on? The question I really want to ask you is this: What would the the current you? What advice would the current you give to your younger self? What advice would the current you give to your younger self as it relates to the journey that you're on? I would say, you know, just always really do what you feel was right. You know what I mean? But my definitely, because I have good jobs, definitely save, 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 save as much as you can. You know, don't don't waste your money on things that you don't need. You know, half of the stuff that I bought five, ten years ago, I don't even have because I've moved over, you know. Like, save your money and then don't listen to people, you know, just do what you think is right. You know, when I started, um, you know, selling my food when I was in college and uh, that's how I paid my rent, that was like a sign from the universe telling me, yo, this is good. You know, this is who you are. You love this. This is making you money. You know, I should have listened then. But we don't know. You know, sometimes you got to go through the through life to understand but I would have definitely saved more. It would have, you know, made it much easier for me now. But also don't be discouraged on this journey. You know, sometimes it's not always up, up, up. It's also down sometimes. You know how markets are. You go to some markets, there are not too many people. There's not too much foot traffic. The next market might be too overwhelming, too many people, and you can't keep up. And if you can get a team together early, that I would also advise you to do, you know, you could get people who are on the same path, have the same passion, you know, have the same work ethic. Maybe you meet them at a market and you say, hey, let's team up, let's do it together, you know. Definitely, if you can do that early, that I would advise that as well. 
And, and my last thing for you, Glass, I'm really, cause I'm really, it's really baffling me that you, that you're 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 a one woman show in, in, a, in, a, in a, as a chef and cooking. Um, what's really been the issue with uh, mm -hmm. assistance or help? Uh, I think maybe it's because let me let me preface this. Let me preface this, and I want you to be honest. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I thought you said you wanted to rephrase it. No. No, I, I want to preface it by be honest, because sometimes we say stuff that not you, but we just say stuff, and it's like what comes to our head first. But no, what if you really dig down to well, why don't I have a team? Why don't I have some additional people? Uh, especially in this, this this space that you are, whether it be friends that help out or whatever the case may be. Okay, so like I came I came to the city, the country, just like two years ago to New York. Two years ago, I don't have like a network. I don't have pe a lot of people that I know. You know, I was very isolated. So and also I didn't know where to hire professional staff. You know, and when I did hire people, when I did make friends. They would come like for one or two markets and then they wouldn't do things right. You know, like I had like three drivers and for example, cause I don't drive, for example, <laughs> I don't even have a license. So I'd hire, hire a driver and then he wouldn't show up the day of the market, stuff like that, you know, or the workers wouldn't show up, stuff like that. You know? Now, now, can we go back to the first thing you said? You said the first thing you said was I only been here for two years. And I, I don't have a network. Yeah. All right. Let's just stop right there. Now, to my audience, can I, somebody help me help me understand this? This woman, this impressive woman here with this personality who seems to be very uh, personable, been in a place for two years and tells you she doesn't have a network. Can, is, that, is anybody else scratching their head at that? So when I said, be honest, like you, something's missing. It's not adding up. And I don't what do you to, mean? And you, it's just not, add, that's not adding up. That I don't have a network within two years? You don't even need two years or six months, three months with your personality, with your with your experience, with where you came from. With the, Ooh, but, okay, but I, I didn't go, I didn't, I just went, really, literally, I went to work and back home. Like, that's what I would do, you know, just home, work, go babysitting. You know, it takes time. I'm like, I I might not seem shy, but I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I, you don't, I don't know anybody. So who do I go out with? You know what I mean? Like, I only made a friend, like my best friend now. I met her like a year ago, you know? We're going to talk, we're, we're going to talk offline. We're going to talk, I'll talk to you offline about this. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, you, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. You just need a little, little, you need a little. You just need a little coaching. I get it. I get it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm willing to learn. I, there's always more to learn. Well, that I know. That I, that I do know. I do know that you're willing to learn. That's why I'm willing to assist in this area. But I'm just telling you, uh, as, as someone that's been through enough, that's not adding up. That, that's okay. Just, you know, no, I, I really, I want to I wanna nail that part. I want to know what, what's wrong with me. Shit. <laughs> all right man that's what's going on man hey guys again man we got miss black miss glass that told from the bbc uh, if you're in the bbc go ahead and put it in console hashtag bbc uh you guys can check out the website at www.sambuxa.com uh, facebook it's samosa nyc go ahead go ahead and follow hit that follow page go ahead and show your support by doing that on instagram go ahead and hit that follow page on instagram as well at Sambuxa NYC, you guys got an opportunity to see some of the great food that she is uh, that she is uh, you know uh, making and catering uh, here on the website. Let me go ahead and go back there for a little while. It's got testimonies, got the menu and all that good stuff that she showed us uh, through there. Uh, and so, and, and and you know, I'm working on trying to see how what I can do to get some of this food down here to Atlanta so I can taste it. I can really really leave my testimony as well. So hopefully, we'll get that uh, get that going as well and taste that sauce. That sauce, that 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 whatever it is, that you have. huh? The secret sauce. Yeah, the secret sauce. Absolutely, man. So again, glass. Hey, man, this is this is a pleasurable time. I want to say thank you so thank much you for so time much. To here uh, tonight. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on here. Like, 
I, I feel so honored that like, you know, for someone who's been following you and learning from you, it's like, oh my God, I'm on there, you know? Like, you know, it's really an honor. Thank you so much for taking this time to introduce my company to everybody. Like, I really appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome. And hopefully it's helping you get over this little shyness thing that you said you got going on. Okay. Yeah, hopefully it's gonna help you with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, my beautiful man. This guys is the Black Virtual Marketplace where we're having a black owned business go viral tonight by your shares, your likes, your follows, all that good stuff. We're just supporting the queen and her dream. And so uh we I've done my part tonight, and all I can do is just hope and anticipate and expect that you've done yours, doing something that's free by hitting that like button or that share button and uh helping us to uh bring more awareness to other people that uh, this young lady uh exists and her company is uh, ready to do business. Hey man, I want you guys to remember this uh, that it takes a village. It starts with us. Let's build as we climb together. We all we got, people. Matter of fact, we all we need. And thank God that's more than enough. Until next episode, you know what time it is. Mr. DJ, hit the music. You've been watching the Black Virtual Marketplace live. <laughs> Your host, Evan Jefferson. Music by your boy, Conte. <laughs> The Black Virtual Marketplace, where we bring global exposure to Black business, Black talent, Black art. <laughs> black people stand up, support one another. Black Virtual Marketplace. Oh. Uh...